Welcome to Ancient Military Tactics, a channel dedicated to providing visual representation of how ancient militaries operated and waged war, going into detail about the real tactics they used to win battles, and showing you, the viewer, how this would have looked in ancient times. In this video, we will be describing the tactics used in one of the largest known battles to have used chariot warfare, the Battle of Kadesh, that took place in 1274 BC. If there's an ancient battle you'd like us to cover, hit that subscribe button and leave in the comments which battle you'd like to see. This conflict was between the Egyptians and the Hittites, two neighboring nations who were constantly disputing territories. Leading the Egyptians was Pharaoh Ramses II, and leading the Hittites was King Muwatali II. Both empires had fought over the city of Kadesh a number of times for its ideal location on trade routes. But this massive battle in 1274 BC gained its significance for being the earliest battle in recorded history to be thoroughly documented detailing the leadership, organization, operations, tactics, and weapons. However, what also makes this battle interesting is that these multiple ancient accounts although thoroughly detailed, offer conflicting information about the battle, leading to several different possibilities regarding its outcome. The information in this video are the details that these multiple accounts can agree on. It was said that the Pharaoh Ramses of Egypt commanded about 20,000 men and 2,000 chariots, who were divided into six units. The first four divisions were named after the Egyptian gods, Amen, Ra, Ptah, and Set. His fifth unit was his personal bodyguard, and the final and sixth unit, called the Niaren, was his reserve force. Each unit consisted of chariots, infantry, and archers. The bulk of the Egyptian army was infantry, who carried javelins and short swords. Ramses' archers were almost completely Nubian, carrying composite bows made of bone and wood. In these times, chariots were the equivalent of aircraft, and the Egyptians, though not as numerous as the Hittites, had plenty of chariots. They used them as a hit-and-run weapon by driving close to the enemy lines and pelting them with projectiles. King Muatali of the Hittites commanded about 40,000 men and 3,000 chariots. The strength of his military also lied in his chariot force. Through rigorous breeding and training, the Hittites had superior horses at their disposal. They also had sturdier chariots than the Egyptians, and they were able to support more men on the chariot so as to make them more of a shock force than an archer force, as the Egyptians so used them. Think of these heavy Hittite chariots as shock cavalry, used to disrupt the enemy lines and break the morale of the soldiers who had to face a wall of chariots charging right at them. Before this battle, Ramses, through interrogation of some Hittite soldiers he had captured, learned that Muatali was afraid of the Egyptian force and that he had retreated north, abandoning the city of Kadesh. Excited for conquest, Ramses hastily made plans to march north. He sent the Niaran reserve along the coast of the Mediterranean, and he and his remaining forces marched towards the abandoned city. Determined to reclaim Kadesh for the Egyptian empire, Ramses hurried forward, leaving his divisions of men to catch up. This would prove to be a major mistake. As Ramses, his personal guard, and the division of Amon set up camp on the northwest outskirts of Kadesh, he quickly learned that he had been deceived. After capturing Hittite spies within the camp, he found out that Muatali and his men had not fled north after all, and that they were actually very close, just east of the city and across the Orontes River, ready to attack the Egyptians. As the division of Ra was approaching Kadesh from the south, and not in the slightest expecting a battle, 2,500 Hittite chariots charged into the unsuspecting Egyptian infantrymen, 
scattering and completely routing the Division of Ra. Now, with only the Division of Amun and the Royal Guard with Ramses, Muwatali's chariots continued north to rain down terror upon the Egyptian camp, slaughtering and scattering the troops. Ramses mounted his chariot and led the surviving men in a fierce counterattack and forced the Hittites back to the east. However, he left the camp undefended and open to looting by other Hittites who had dismounted their chariots. As these unsuspecting Hittites were raiding the camp, the Niaran reserve from the north arrived and routed the remaining Hittites, who fled back across the Orontes River. Seeing this state of disarray, Muwatali continued to send forth his chariots to aid his retreating forces. However, Ramses successfully held the field, either driving the Hittites into the river to drown or slaughtering them on the banks. When the division of Ptah finally arrived, it only strengthened Ramses' numbers against the receding Hittites. It is unclear why Muwatali didn't send his infantry which he had in reserve across the river and in the city of Kadesh. As one historian, Margaret Bunsen, put it, Muwatali watched the cream of his command fall before Ramses, including his own brother. For hours, the Hittites charged into the Egyptian lines, but they were unable to push back the Egyptian army, who successfully held the field. Eventually, though, both Ramses and Muwatali retreated their armies, one historian states it's because they simply couldn't fight in the dark, while another stated that Muwatali wanted to cut his losses, and the Egyptians, who had also lost a huge number of men, were too tired to continue, and they didn't have the manpower to siege the city of Kadesh. While it is certain that the Hittites retreated first, they never lost control of the city. So, who won exactly? Both sides claimed victory in their own accounts. Ramses claimed victory due to the fact that the Hittite ambush did not work, and the pharaoh lived on to become Ramses the Great. Muwatali, however, claimed victory because Ramses was still unable to reclaim the city of Kadesh for the Egyptian empire. Though the outcome of this battle is still up for debate to this day, one could argue that its significance does not stem from who won, but rather the peace that resulted from it. It is suggested that the battle with no winner led the two rulers to realize that the best course of action for their rivaling nations was instead the path of peace. So, the Battle of Kadesh led to the world's very first peace treaty in recorded history, signed in 1258, the Treaty of Kadesh. Thank you for watching Ancient Military Tactics, your go-to resource for the strategies and tactics used by ancient militaries throughout history to conquer their foes. We are a brand new channel, and your support would mean the world to us. So, if you liked this video and would like to see more, please subscribe and leave in the comments which ancient military tactic you'd like to see next. Until next time, thank you and have a wonderful day.